Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I'm going to examine what happens in the abort modes for the space shuttle using the Giulio Dondi KOS script, the shuttle program that Giulio Dondi has cooked up. And this is by request by Giulio Dondi himself as well as others. Uh, we want to see how the script handles various abort scenarios and that it does so correctly. As I understand it, the transatlantic abort may be difficult, uh, so uh, we might hold off on that one for now, but I'm more interested in, well, maybe we'll see. I, I don't know. I'm just gonna turn off engines and see what happens, okay? I'm gonna keep it really simple. So I've action grouped the engines so that I can turn them off and we'll see what happens at various times. So here we go. All right, and this is the same install where I did the tutorials on how to install all of this. So, yeah, uh, you, you can have all this too. And run ops1.ks. And the first thing I'll do is shut off an engine shortly after launch. Once it clears the tower, off goes one engine. Engine out detected at plus three seconds. Let's see what it'll do. So it's that engine, the bottom left engine. Exclamation mark. <laughs> I don't know what that exclamation mark is. I'm not gonna touch anything. I'm not gonna touch anything. I have not tried this out yet. This is an experiment. I do like it when I don't know what's going to happen and you folks don't know what's going to happen. We are past the speed of sound. The shuttle can't abort while the SRVs are on, by the way. Uh, so we are waiting until they leave. Though it might take a different trajectory given the abort. I think that's what the dotted line is. The dotted line is the alternate trajectory, I believe. So technically it is aborting. Okay, getting ready for SRV SEP. The SEP motors are still a little bit wicked. Okay, it ignited the OMS engines. And it's got a point straight up. I did, actually, probably one of my most popular videos on YouTube, maybe the most popular video, is when I did the RTLS abort. And it's obviously going to do it much more accurately than I did, but I, I just demonstrated that it works. So maybe I'll link the RTLS abort video, and then you guys can compare this much more accurate version to that. But you can see it's pointing up like this a bit. It, uh, the thing is, it needs to burn off the fuel. So, and also it needs to get higher up so that it can turn <laughs> safely. Um, even though it's pointed like this because the engines are tilted, it's actually going a little bit more like that. Does it know which side to abort to? I guess it'll start up the OPS, uh, the landing program, OPS-3. Can't really see the cape anymore. 100 kilometers up, or a bit down range. But we are within the envelope. But you can see the thrust weight ratio is fairly low because we only have the two engines. It's using a lot of RCS thrust in the nose there. Using the OMS engines is mostly to dump the OMS propellant. With all the OMS propellant in the tail, it's got to be imbalanced for landing, so it needs to be down to a certain amount. So that's also partly what we're doing with this delay. Because of the low thrust weight ratio, most of the amount that we've gotten up so far is because of the SRB boost. And that's one reason why the SRBs uh, pitched up more and went on a higher trajectory than they initially normally would. Okay, well, the little dots are hitting back down now. The shuttle only ever aborted once, and that was an abort to orbit. Uh, it lost an engine late, later into the mission, and it was able to get to orbit 
by that point anyway. Other abort scenarios, and now we have the OMS engines cut off here. Other abort scenarios are uh, abort once around. If the shuttle can't get enough height on its own, uh, it will try to just do one orbit, and because it'll still be somewhat low, uh, it'll just save enough fuel to make sure that it uh, hits a landing site after one orbit. Uh, so that's not a full abort to orbit because it can't continue its mission. Uh, that's an abort once around, uh, if it's a little bit short of fuel. And then, okay, this is now pitching over. OMS dump stopped, powered pitch around, guidance converged. So now it has only enough propellant to uh, boost back. It is doing a boost back for RTLS, just like just like Falcon 9 copied. Anyway, um, anyway, uh, but aside from the abort once around, then there is also the transatlantic abort. So if it can't even make one orbit around, it'll try and hit a landing site across the Atlantic. And we may or may not see that. And then there's actually the worst option. Uh, people often think that return to launch site is the worst option. It isn't. It's uh, it's rough, but it's not not the worst. The worst is ditching in the Atlantic. Um, so, yeah, uh, ditching in the Atlantic is, as far as I'm concerned, the worst option. I have been pondering a shuttle series. I would like to build something with the shuttle using Geodondi's program, since it makes it much more convenient. I already built the ISS once. And I'm already sort of building another station in my Simulating a Space Future series, the Newport Depot and all. It's a little bit hard to decide what I would put together with the Space Shuttle, what I would do with the Space Shuttle. I wonder which variant these are on, actually. Uh, this is actually the baseline RS-25, not the D or anything. Okay, so CO I assume is cut off. The circle is a certain amount of time ahead of where we're at, and then the triangle is where we're at right now. And this is pretty clearly a velocity altitude graph. There are a whole lot of subtle things we could do, like during the abort cutting off one engine. Here it says three engine out green, which I assume means that even if we lost all three engines right now, it'd be okay. It would be able to manage to glide back. Okay, what I'm really interested in is how it switches programs here. Because now we have to switch to the descent program, not ascent guidance anymore. Okay, yep, yeah, it did that. Target, stock runway. Really? Um, can we not change? I need to be able to change which runway it ends up going to. Well, auto. Auto flaps, auto brake. Maybe OPS-1 itself should have the abort runway listed. It doesn't right now. That could be one of its parameters, though. So I don't know exactly where this is trying to go to. <laughs> All I know is it's really high up, though. I think the external tank just exploded. Whoa, whoa, now the icon's falling. Ooh. Okay, it's taking this top line. Unlike the normal trajectory, it seems to be uh, going for more of a glide. But then it's also using the air brakes.
We're actually going up right now. Nope, oh, there's the there's the KSC right there. But which landing runway is it gonna go to? It says S turn there. It's really high compared to those channels. But again, we probably should be well, I don't know, it's it's got the time to HAC there, so. Okay, well no, it's sliding back, it's sliding back. <laughs> this is nominal. Uh okay. All right, no need to do any more S turn. I guess it's gonna try for the stock runway, that one right there. Considering the way it normally lands, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, it usually use, uses a fair amount of landing distance. I think I'll do uh, the one engine out scenarios in this video and then I'll do the two engine out scenarios subsequently. So we, we'll see what happens when we lose an engine later on and wonder if it can do abort once around. The reason I wonder about that is normally we have to set up the re-entry for OPS3, right? I actually do the re-entry burn for OPS3. So is it going to be able to set up a abort once around scenario? That said, uh, if it's, I don't think I can go straight into that runway like this. But you can see how much longer the shuttle landing facility is compared to the stock runway, which is why I really don't want it to land on the stock runway. This definitely feels like a much different trajectory than it does on a normal landing. Is it just trying to head for Pat 39A? <laughs> oh, well, Pat 39A is here anyway, but still. I'm nervous about what it's going to do. I, I don't think... Where is it going? Maybe it thinks that the stock runway is over here. Okay, yeah, it thinks that there's a runway here. Almost there. It's always almost there. It's always landing that's tough because it always goes for a place I did not expect. Ouch. Well, I guess it survived. Anyway, uh, I'm going to try a different kind of a board, but we'll let me let me see if I can figure out how to tell it what runway it's supposed to be going to. Okay, well, perusing the information on GitHub, I'm not entirely clear what I should do. It didn't seem like the option to change the runway was enabled, and looking at the landing site's uh, script, there's no indication of which one should be used as the abort site then same in the well there is a parameters thing um yeah anyway i think i'll just run a different kind of abort and see what happens i'm going to try to shut off the engine after srb set this time so it's pretty clearly okay if it knew which runway to go to. Uh, it's always a little bit fun when something goes wrong. But here I'm going to turn off the engine later. So it'll be lulled into a false sense of security. Okay, off we go. We're carrying a small load of Avgas right now. So there is a payload in the bay, but it's not beyond the payload capacity that the shuttle can bring down. There's a limit to what the shuttle could come back down with. And this is within that limit. It's about 12 tons. And you can see the RTLS line there, and the ATL line, and then TAL line. 
So if we uh, needed to abort here because an engine is out, presumably it'll go for RTLS again. I'll uh, try that sort of thing out uh, in a different video. For now, I just want to test the abort to orbit scenario out. Two engine TAL. So if we had two engines, we can do transatlantic abort here. As I understand, I think blue means we're headed into water and green means we're headed to land, but I might be misremembering that. Intact abort versus not so intact abort kind of things. Negative return. Okay, well, yes, we definitely want a negative return. So once we pass the RTLS dash there, we can't do RTLS, that's what that means. And once we get the ATO, press to ATO. Well, as it so happens, yep, wrong thing. We have lost one engine. Guns converged, engine out detected. Abort ATO. So it has to pitch up because now it has less thrust to weight ratio, of course. This is the worst abort to ATO situation for one engine out because we had it right when a press to ATO was called. If it's later, it's easier, of course. You had more thrust to weight ratio to begin with. So we're just going to see that it can actually get to orbit per spec. It's actually interesting how well it can control this role with only two engines. When I do the two engine out video, this is going to be real interesting. I doubt... I mean, obviously it can't do a roll like that unless it fires the OMS engines or something. We're actually going down right now. But that would be mostly as planned. Oh, maybe I should press to ATO, press to ATO. Uh, I think maybe he was thinking we were going transatlantic abort there, I'm not sure. I also don't know whether I need to actually click the abort button. And I need to look up what the exclamation mark is. And we were falling a little bit short, but that green line is the nominal trajectory. Well, maybe it's going to try for transatlantic because I left that mode on transatlantic. I'm not sure. Well, it's pitched up so much, though. But we haven't really covered a huge amount of terrain with our trajectory here, so... Oh, well, moment of truth time. What kind of injection will we get? Okay. It's turning towards cutout. Okay, it is cutout. It's not an abort to orbit. Periapsis is negative. Uh, it's that 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 thing is twitching right now. Mm, program ended. It should have occurred to me to do this a little bit sooner. Okay, well, we're technically in orbit. And I technically have enough to get back, I believe. 194, just uh, barely what would be safe. Uh, not a whole lot to do other things with it. But maybe if I had expected this to be the outcome of the script, I would have done that better. Let me launch again and see... See if uh, maybe pressing ATO a little bit earlier would have worked out better for us. Or whether it'll still leave us with a negative 500. Again, abort to orbit is the only type of abort that the shuttle ever actually did, so... So we would like to get this one right. Okay, booster set. Still need to work on that part. Okay, this time I'm going to actually press to ATO and then turn off an engine. I'll turn off a different engine this time. Let me turn off the top. Oh, I thought that was the top one. But okay, fine. I turned off that one instead. Okay. Engine out. 
detected, abort, that still says the same thing, but it still seems to be underneath this. Uh, let me keep trying to... It says ATO trajectory 2, so it knows it's ATO. I didn't see that last time, but it sees, it sees that as uh, abort to orbit. If it turns out to be the same way, I'm just going to try to do the OMS burn a little bit better than I did last time, a little bit sooner, and see if I can make orbit with more delta V. I want to know how much delta V I end up with in orbit if I do it properly. Well, here we go. Uh, yeah, it's got cut out the same way. <laughs> okay, maybe it has to do with where the external tank needs to end up, probably. Okay, and it's done. All right, but this time I'm going to do this a little bit better. Okay, for now I'm gonna call that OMS burn one, and then we'll time warp to close to apoapsis and do another one. Okay, well this time I got to a much nicer and more usable orbit, 281 by 258, and we have 204 left. So I only left a little bit more than last time in there, but we are in a more proper orbit, so that's good. Let me just see how the clouds are looking right now in daylight here. But other than that, there's your first taste of the abort scenarios that come with Giulio Dandi's uh, OPS-1 and OPS-3, the KOS programs. I mean, it, it, it's a bundle of scripts, so I'm just going to call it a program. The KOS programs for the space shuttle. And you can refer to my previous videos on how to install all this and run them. Uh, I'll link those in the video description. And this is how the clouds there from Volumetric Clouds plus uh, RSS Reborn are looking like right now. And with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.